And we are live again. Um, we actually had some technical difficulties. Our 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 uh, commander in chief, he he came in uh, to the show and uh, gave us an update. And he came in on the backstage and he accidentally uh, he accidentally hit the the uh, end broadcast button. And so we had to to real quick scramble to to get it all back together. That's uh that was that was pretty good. Uh, um, I, I was I was struggling there for a minute. I wasn't sure exactly uh, exactly what to do. So we, we yeah we that that's a new one. Haven't done that one before. So there you go. Uh, anyway, welcome to Striving for Eternity Apologetics Live. I want to welcome everybody. Uh, invite you to jump back in for all those that have um, uh, been commenting on the other other feed. Um, KT, how you doing? I'm I'm glad you jumped in. Uh, like I said, I apologize for technical difficulties, but in, in this world, in this day and age, at the very least, nobody got slapped. Right. I mean, you know, that's, that's a pretty good, that's, that's a pretty good thing. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, at the very least, nobody got slapped. That's, that's always a positive. We want to, we want to make sure that nobody gets slapped here on the show and, uh, or beaten up or, or cussed at. Right. Um, yeah, I, uh, Laura. Like I said, sorry. We just had a uh, we had a, a minor technical difficulty in that uh, as we got everything set up. Um, uh, Andrew uh, jumped in to give us a, a really good report, five hour conversation with a with a young man, and he accidentally hit the wrong button uh, going out the door, and he closed the door behind him. So um, ah, it happens. So uh, hey, Jason, how you doing? Um, it looks like everything's up. Uh, everybody's on Facebook, just so everybody knows. Um, I'm of the opinion that Facebook does not like Christians. And uh, if you agree with that, you might want to raise your hand and say, yeah, that's that's me. Um, I'm of the opinion that they don't. And um, so I can't see most of the comments or any comments really uh, in the um, on Facebook. I can't actually see the comments that are, that are coming through if you're, if you're signing something in here. So whenever anybody, you know, put stuff out here, Facebook is doing us a, a big favor and they're, they're, they're locking it down. They're, they're stopping us from being able to comment with people and talk with people. So um, I'm going to ask you to please, if you, if you want to uh, side chat with us and whatnot, please come on the, the, the uh, YouTube page and, and and click on there um yeah see jason said they mess with they mess with uh, their church all the time you know especially when we're talking about things like critical race theory and you know the the leftist agenda and the things that are going on we start talking about intersectionality and crt and they they're saying oh we're not teaching that at all you know i just i just saw a um a uh, a video um actually look at this uh joanna uh Joanna Frederick Club Hayes waved at us, and I actually got that to come through. Um, so if if you wanna if you wanna comment, please do all the comments you can, and then come over on uh, YouTube, and before they ban us out and throw us out, uh, comment on there as well. You know, and um, what, what I was gonna say is 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 I saw this thing just today um, where they were the um, critical race theory guys the the CRT agenda guys, intersectionality and things like that. They're bragging about teaching uh, two-year-olds about their sexual identity. They're bragging about teaching their, their little child, uh, our little children. Well, not mine, because I'm going to be honest with you. I've never had a child in public school. I refuse to let my children to come home as Romans under the guise of Caesar. And uh, if you do, you know, have your kids in there, you know, that's, if they come out as, as Romans, you know, don't be surprised. Um, I've had mine in private school, which, you know, there's, there's problems there too. You, you can say, oh, I've got my kids in Christian private school. Well, you better be teaching them as well because we've seen over and over and over again, this indoctrination that's coming from, from all over the place. But what I want to say to you is, <clears throat> is that I have been seeing over and over again, the the left saying, oh, we're not teaching CRT. We're not teaching Marxism, cultural Marxism. We're not teaching this 
<clears throat> this mentality. And Andrew, you know, he he threw he jumped in here and and he clear, made it clear there was a lady saying you were oppressing us because I'm uh, because I'm trans and uh, stuff like that. Um, and, and the thing is, is, is he says, well, um, if, if you, we get to define our terms, then, uh, you're an anti-Semite and he goes, and the guy said, what, how do you, how do you know that? Well, because I'm Jewish, I get to define the terms. You know, if we live in a world where there are no set fast, steadfast terms, no steadfast truth, then anybody makes up anything they want to. And, and we saw that, um, everybody has seen the videos with, uh, the the distraction guys that are trying to uh that are trying to distract us from the real real things that are going on in the world um i mean i'm uh, give me just a second if you would i going to uh respond uh to my dear brother and uh, um i will have to send another invite because josiah is supposed to be in here and um let me send another invite to to my dear brother um Let's see if we can get him in. That would be, that would be a wonderful thing to have have uh, Josiah in. So, in case everybody's wondering, this is uh, this is um, where we 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 have we have glitches in our lives, and we have to take care of them on on the spot. Okay. So I apologize for the delay there. Um, you know, it, it happens, right? Everybody can, um, everybody can relate. You know, we all have glitches. But you know, you think about it. In this society, we have you know all of this insanity going on, and then you see the Oscar night. Nobody watches the Oscars. Nobody wants to see the wokeism. Nobody wants to be preached to. Nobody wants to, to, um, you know, have have all this silly stuff going on. And, and to to be forced to watch this, hey brother, welcome hey. back. All right, nobody wants to be forced to watch the the this stuff, and yet now everybody is talking about um, uh, what went on with uh, Will Smith and um, oh. uh, Chris Rock. Everybody's talking about it, but I believe there's a reason for it. Um, I, I could be completely wrong, but from everything I'm seeing. Guys, whether it was staged or not, I think it was. It, it is. It is the thing of choice that is being used to silence the real things that are going on. Um, you, you uh, mark my. I'm words. totally drawing a blank here. What's going on? Just uh, with uh, Will Smith uh, getting slapped or doing the slapping thing. Will Smith got smacked. No, man, you really don't watch anything at all. Um, no, so, no, I don't. So, Okay, so uh, Chris Rock made a, a, a joke as he was want to do. Um, Chris Rock makes this joke at the Oscars. Uh, you know, he's going through roasting everybody like he always does. And um, uh, Chris, he, he, he makes this joke about uh, Jada Smith uh, and her, her, her bald head. She, you know, she shaved her head. And you know he didn't know anything about you know what was going on with her, and he just made made the joke. Uh, talking about you know GI Jane two, I can't wait to see it again. Uh, a, a film about woman empowerment, a leftist film, all oh, about okay. you know the you know the women power and and how you know women are are they can go become Navy SEALs and elite Marines and this that and the other. And you go, uh, okay, well, I mean, l l let's not uh, let's not say that no woman can, but a, a hundred and ten pound um, GI Jane, um, is, is going to have a hard time in that. And, and it was beyond believable. You know, it's, it, it was unbelievable because, you know, Demi Moore, you know, it, she was picked because she's beautiful and, you know, could shave her head off and, and be the superhero. And, and here he makes this joke. That's like, what, what was GI Jane 25 years plus 25 years ago, 20 years ago, something like that. Okay. So, so, um, here he makes this joke. Well, Will Smith got mad, runs up there and slaps him in. The, well, struts up and slaps him in the face, and you know, Will uh, the Chris Rock just kind of, kind of took it on the chin, if you will, and he didn't punch him, didn't respond back, and then the, all the blowout of all of this that's going on that everybody's talking about. Well, I don't think it had anything to do with what's actually going on, other than it is a a blinder 
to stop people from being able to see what truly is happening. I don't know if anybody saw it or not, but Putin came out and said, you're, if you're going to get my gas from now on, you're going to pay in rubles. So he has gold-backed rubles. We have oil or, or fiat-backed um, uh, dollars, American dollars. And the whole agenda, in my opinion, is to destroy the American economy and the dollar economy, uh, which started at day one of the presidency, um, to make us uh, dependent upon the, the Russian oligarchs and the Russian oil companies and on Putin. And Putin says, if you're going to buy oil from me, it's going to be through the ruble. And, you know, nobody's talking about that because every conversation is about Chris Rock and this, that and the other. It's all designed to deceive people so that they do not have to listen and understand what's going on. I, I mean, yeah, OK, whether or not he slapped him, it's still being used to silence the true story. Of course, I also have a problem with the fact that you got um, uh, Will Smith, his wife out there going on on their TV show and outing themselves as having you know relationships outside of marriage and and you know I guess she's had three or four other. It's just a bunch of of wicked depravity. But yeah, think about this, guys. What better way? to get you and me off the truth and off the subjects and off the reality than get us to arguing about all the little uh, entertainment things that they're doing. And that's part of Marxism, by the way. That's part of the agenda of Marxism. That's exactly what they want to do is to entertain you and to twist the truth to get you on their narrative. You know, we talk about, you know, all the things that are going on to try to get us to, to try to get us off the trail, off the scent of what is truly being done in our country and around, indeed around the world. You know, we started mm -hmm. our conversation a few weeks back, uh, Josiah. We talked about you know, um, you know, kind of a little recap here. We we kind of talked about um, you know the the umbrella of intersectionality. And we went mm -hmm. through and discussed those things. We talked about, uh, let's see, what else did we, what else did we look at? We talked about the guardian. It's not about, about race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. What is, what, what was that? It's not about race. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, let me stop screen again and let me see if I've got, uh, got this set up because we had a, a little difficulty. I don't know if you remember seeing that issue of difficulty we had. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a little difficulty. So let me back up here. See if this works this time. Tell me where it's not about race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. Did you hear that? Yep. Okay. Man's inhumanity to man. Well, you, you can't have you can't have people being rounded up and killed, and it be about race when you are teaching a narrative that the only racist people in the world are white people, and they can't be white, uh, racist against themselves. They have to be oppressing non-whites or anybody in a category intersectional category that they've defined. And if you remember, we talked about this, this is, um, this is a, a great example of being blind to truth because Adolf Hitler, he just said that they were the, what, what race, what, what kind of, what kind of the master race. Yep. Yeah. So we've talked about this and, and we started, you know, trying to, to go through and look at some of the the highlights to, to just get a feel for what has been going on as as the narrative has driven from just race to a new dynamic that is now you know sexuality homosexuality transgender you're not allowed to speak against the the men that are dressed up as women that are dominating uh, the, the different fields you got, 
the man on the left who is uh, at Penn, T Penn State. His and, name used to be, wasn't it William? And he changed it to Leah. Yeah, Leah something. I don't remember what it was. Leah something. Anyway, the, you know, the, the, the thing that w is, is mind blowing is this guy was 240 something, 280 something. And um, now absolute top champion, absolute, the, the elite, but we've, we're seeing over and over and over again that our children are being indoctrinated. I just had a thing. I just saw a thing where Disney uh, had uh, accidentally videotaped the, the new agenda to bring in all the, the trans and all the women and all the men that are homosexuals and give them preference and place so that your children see it as normative. We yeah, want your children really to see this. Everybody, I really hope everybody stops watching Disney. They, they are actively trying to brainwash your children to accept the homosexual agenda, to accept CRT, to accept all this anti-biblical garbage. I want to, I want to say what Paul, Paul, what Paul used for rubbish. Scubulon. Uh, that's okay. Scubulon. Yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. To call it dung. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. that, that's, that's what it all is. It's, it's garbage. You, you need yeah. to not let your kids watch this, uh, red movie where, uh, this girl, is being told to rebel against her parents, to use her body to get money, to have sex before she's married. It's 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 garbage, complete garbage. And parents, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I got I got a three girls, five and under, and I they're not watching Disney. I don't care if how much they like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I don't care how yep. much they like. Any, any, anything. It's it's anti-biblical garbage, and exactly. There's great programs out there, like Answers TV. Yep. They have great programs. They'll teach your kids about Jesus and Bible and science. Great stuff. Yeah. And you, you just think about it. If they really truly cared about your children, they would not be trying to indoctrinate them into a system that would harm them. I'm sorry, but homosexuality and transgenderism, they can't self, you know, reproduce. They have to, they have to groom and teach your children. I actually saw a thing. I didn't get to have time to, to bring it up, but um, Tucker Carlson, which I don't watch very much of him. I'm just not, I'm not that, I'm not that big of a fan. I'll be honest with you. I just, but I saw it. He has and, a body uh, mouth. Yeah, I, I just I'm just not that huge of a fan. Um, he actually posted this thing where there was where there was four or five school teachers, young school teachers, bragging about teaching two year old children about their sexual identity, about how they can be transgender, about how they can change uh, their sexual preferences, about how they can, you know, do certain things with their bodies, you know, about about what they can do. Um, and then one was saying, you know, well, there was a little kid that was saying, hey, why don't we have a flag that we can, you know, pledge allegiance to? It was, you mean this one? It turns around, was BTU IA plus flag. And, and that was, the, you know, the message. We are teaching and indoctrinating these children. We're going to teach them to, to accept this, this ideology. And, and they are going to, uh, they're, they're going to be, educated to believe that these types of, of things are, are the right way to go. And, and, and you have to think about it while, while everybody has the right to, 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 to think what they want to think and, and to do what they want to do in uh, the American society, we do not have the right to harm other people. Now in Christianity, no, you don't have the right to think and do what you want to do. You know, and in no other religion do you have the right to think and do what you want to do, right? In Christianity, we say the Bible is our standard, and it tells us what's going on. It tells us what we're to believe. It tells us how we're supposed to behave. Well, our society now says that's not good enough. You can't 
teach and believe and think that. And, and we have whole cultures of, of professing Christians that are giving in to that mentality and saying, well, we need to change how we believe, what we say, how we preach. We need to change what we believe about you know, racism. We need to change what we believe about uh, uh, you know, society as a whole, um, about God. And so we need to filter everything through the lens of critical theory. Critical theory, uh, as we're going to talk about here, it starts out from uh, very nefarious places. And once you start there, you have to judge everything by that. Um, yeah. Yeah, you have to judge everything by that. And you think about it. Is it wrong? You know, here I've, I've pulled this thing up. We looked at it last time. Two strong trans players in women's rugby are driving referees away. If you notice, it's two strong trans players are driving referees away. So which one's in the wrong? Well, in the narrative, the one that's wrong is the referee, not the quote unquote trans, or should I say the men who are dressing as women to take advantage of the weaker women around them. I think you should say cross dressers. That, that keeps it kind of straight for me. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. So let's go. Let's start talking about some, some symptoms, some problems. We see the increasing display of lawless behavior in the culture, and it's uh, that is in it of itself isn't a problem. It's a symptom of a few key problems. The the some of those problems you see are the the church itself has largely followed the culture. We just talked about that. They've largely followed the cultural mindset of many on these issues without even knowing what they're, uh, what's going on. They, they don't think in terms of what is, what is right and orderly. They think in terms of, of being, you know, on the right side of history. That's the term you're going to hear a lot. You need to be on the right side of history. Well, in order, in order to understand what's going on, we have to look at the, the world war of worldviews. Now you can submit to the worldview of the world, I mean, I've even seen, guys, I've seen, you know, Christians arguing that sexual perversion in books is not that big of a deal as long as Christians are writing about it. That as long as they're using it to, to codify the, the, the biblical argument. There was some, somebody that I was, I was noticing was, was talking about Song of Solomon's talks about sexuality. So, uh, so it's not wrong for us to talk about you know, women's bodies and, 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 and to view women's bodies and to lust over women. It's not, it's not wrong because we see it in Song of Solomon. Well, excuse me, but if I'm not mistaken, Song of Solomon is talking about a married man and woman. Yep. It's promoting marriage. It's promoting marriage. And the intimacy is within marriage. It's not in front of neighbors. It's not in front of. Yep anybody else it's it's intimately between a husband and a wife alone in their bed chambers and and, and i'm going to say something that might eh, i don't care if it offends you or not um I, i'm just going to say it when the culture says we get to teach and define to your children what sexual sexuality is and what it should be and they get to define it um when they are able to say, we define these things for your children, you better run. You better get your kids out of it. The school systems have no right. They have no right to be standing there telling you, telling your children what is right sexually. I, I, there was a, uh, an account I heard of just, just about uh, two, three days ago where there was a parent, who is now suing this board of education and the school because they actually had these uh, 11 and 12 year old girls going into the counselor's office and they had to sign a statement swearing that they would not tell their parents about the discussions. They would not explain to their parents what was going on. And then talking to them about 
trans rights and, and transgender bathrooms. And they had to identify which bathroom they were going to be in and, and which bathroom they were comfortable in and whatnot. Well, I, I'm just going to tell you, th there is no society in no world where a, a man should, should be able to be in the bathroom of a small child. That's not his own child. And, and, and it should, it should not even be a, an, an issue, but it is now. But there's still more. There's still more under the Marxist socialist uh, Frankfurt School that tells us why all of this is going on. You know, there's still more that we're going to talk about that, that tells us why all of this is going on. Um, I don't know if you've seen anything about that or not, Josiah. <laughs> I just uh, no, no. But I, my my wife and I decided a long time ago to homeschool because. Yeah. They are. They were already pushing homosexuality when I was in in school. They were pushing uh, for gay marriage before before it was legal. They're they were saying that God was dead. They they believed that we were just. They were teaching we were just a group of cells. That's all we are. Just a just machines, biological machines with no soul, no purpose. Uh, sharing the gospel. Uh, was really hard to do because I could have gotten detention for it. I could have been suspended for uh, doing what I did do was share the gospel to my peers, handed out gospel tracts. I tried to have conversations, really wanted to do open air preaching, but I didn't want to be disrupt disruptive. Yeah. So uh, I, I, uh, my wife and I decided, you know, the bullying, all the, persecution it, the best chance our children are going to get if we homeschool and we share the gospel with them daily yep stephanie uh she she added to this that uh in that discussion i was having the schools the, st the staff of the school aren't allowed to tell parents if the children's preferred pronouns don't match their gender you know tell me what place when i was growing up and they didn't do much they didn't care about our education but when I was growing up, there was there was these three things that they were responsible for. What do you remember what that was, Josiah? I think it had something to do with like reading. And there was another one. What was that one that they had? Uh, uh, writing. Were they, were they teaching arithmetic back then? That one. That one. Was, I almost forgot. So, or what, so there, was that something you guys invented? I, I'm not sure. Yeah. It was the three R's: reading, writing, arithmetic. N now. That has nothing to do with it. I mean, you think about it. The school systems, the, you, the, you, have, you have a society where they're being taught not how to think, but what to think. Then they go to college, and they're indoctrinated to hate their parents. That's Freudian. I'm sorry, but Freud and Hegel and all these other guys, they wanted society to hate uh, parental authority and Christian authority and biblical authority and biblical accountability and all these things. And that's what's going on. So, you know, Stan, uh, Stan says reading, writing, and arithmetic, but you got it wrong. It's the four R's man. <laughs> that's the one uh, Joanne says uh, reading, writing, arithmetic. That's right. So you gotta say the four R's, there you uh, go. three R's. So yeah, I said four, uh, running was one of them too. We had to run a lot. Um, there you but go. Let's get let's get back into it real quick. So we said some of the symptoms are talking about, you know, we need to understand, identify the worldview of what's going on, the cultural mindset and um, Salvation see, Army. Oh, wants we, we went through this. So I'm not, not going to go back through Todd. Uh, I loved what Todd had to say and things like that. But but, you know, that was a great conversation he had. And I really appreciated uh, Todd Friel's discussion on even in the churches and in, in Christian organizations, we are seeing this, this falling apart of the Christian standard and a giving into the world's mindset, you know, but the, you know, the Bible tells us a few things that we need to remember. I, Ephesians 6, uh, 12 tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this darkness, against the spiritual forces, of evil in the heavenly places. And we need to think about this. Our enemy is not the enemies that we see in the world. Our enemy is Satan. 
So before we start thinking that we need to go start our own commune, or before we start thinking that we need to go take dominion, you need to remember that you're your enemy of Satan. These people are victims that need to hear the gospel. Yep. We don't need to isolate ourselves. We don't need to run away. We don't need to be silent. You know, the Bible tells us that, you know, that it is a soft answer that turns away wrath. I just we're ta- we were just talking about this in, in class last night. It's a soft answer turning away wrath, and the harsh words stir up strife. You, you think about it. The soft answer is what it turns away, not silence. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea that silence is violence, and 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 that words are violence, and everything else. They're going to hate you either way you go, because you're a Christian. Why don't you remember that they're not the enemy? They're the victims of sin. Even though they are perpetrators of sin, they're dead in trespass, and they need to hear that gospel. Just think how awesome it would be if Joe Biden, Camilla Harris, Will Smith, Chris Rock got saved. What, what, oh, yeah. what kind of a world would that look like if they got saved and started living according to the Bible? Amen. Colossians 2.8 says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. Another version says by vain philosophy, according to human tradition and according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. It it goes back to that idea that the indoctrination process is a spiritual one. Okay. I mean, you think about it. Atheism doesn't have its own philosophy. It's an anti-God. Atheism. Okay, their philosophy begins with God and they hate him. The whole entire agenda of this world today is anti-God. It comes from the Antichrist. It comes from Satan. The empty deceit that's fooling people, the human traditions and thoughts and machinations that are coming out to say, you know, this is the right way to go. That That's not what we need to be a part of, you know, brothers and sisters. We need to recognize that that we have an enemy and it's not Chris Rock. It's not Will Smith. It's not even Joe Biden. You know, guys, we need to pray for our uh, leaders. We need to pray for those that are celebrities. You know, Josiah just said it. What if they got saved? I'm pretty sure that, that they all have inboxes and we could all write them letters of, you know, sharing the gospel, you know, giving, doing what Ray Comfort does, you know, putting down the Ten Commandments, showing that we all have broken the Ten Commandments. Then we could talk about uh, Amen. Jesus Christ and the atonement and repentance, repenting of your sin and putting your faith and trust in Christ. I'm pretty sure they all got inboxes somewhere, whether online or through, you know, physical mailboxes. You could write a letter to them. Yep. They need to hear the gospel. Well, I want to I want to read this. Laura Anderson said, the school told my daughter that the, the Holocaust never happened. She stood up and challenged them since some of our family died there and fled to the U.S. And she got suspended for saying that. Well, first of all, I rejoice that you were able to tell us this and that you were able to stand up and have that daughter of yours know the truth. And I'm sorry that she had to go through that. That had to be so embarrassing for her, but the strength of character to stand up and say that this is wrong. You know, they need to hear the truth. They need to hear the gospel. They need to hear the truth about true history, you know, you know, the human tradition says, oh, well, let's just change what's true and in ex- exchange for what's expedient. And Laura, I'm going to tell you, the greatest thing that would, could, is happening to her, your family right now is the persecution of truth to force you to get out from underneath that because she doesn't need to hear that. She doesn't need to hear those lies. Yep. I, that's so offensive. That's so offensive that somebody would tell a, a child, oh, true history never happened. Oh, yeah, Laura, uh, uh, I'm going to be praying for you because yeah. you you got a wonderful uh, got a wonderful little girl there and you have 
now that she's suspended, you have wonderful opportunity to spend with your daughter, invest yeah. in her life, and uh, just train her in, in the word like nothing else. Bill said what I've said so many times, and of course, I don't know who originally said it, to, to ignore history is to repeat it. You know, those who are ignorant of history are doomed to repeat it. I've, I've, I've heard that many times before, and I don't know who the originator of it was, but it is absolutely the truth. Yeah, but, but think of this. Those who, <laughs> those who know history are doomed to watch other people who haven't studied it repeat it. Yep. Coloss, uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 3 says, but I'm afraid, but I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts are going to be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. We have seen so many professing Christians that have found the bomb of racism and critical race theory and critical theory and Marxism and critical social theory. They have found their cause that is greater than Christianity. They found for themselves, I mean, Thabiti Anibawile sitting there. If you've not read his stuff, um, uh, Barry, Barry uh, I can't remember his, his name, but it's Barry something. It, was it's, he a physicist? It's amazing. Was he a you, physicist? Uh, I'm not sure. No, he's, he writes for the... Uh, uh, the gospel coalition. He's uh, one of the big, one of the big time thinkers over there. So he, they haven't he is, buried him yet. No, no, he's, he's, Sorry, he's sitting there and he's joke. okay. I, I missed it. Yep. I missed it. No, but think about it. This guy is out there all the time, constantly beating the drum of critical theory of racism, systemic racism. You know, we need to, embrace the, the 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 new the new agenda to to t dismantle the the nation where does all this stuff come from you know where does it where does this mentality come from it's this ideology of of you know america is evil we need to destroy it well you know where does that that idea come from that 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 we we are seeing so predominant today you know, I mean, you, you hear the, that poor, you know, that, that poor Will Smith was, was beat up on. Do you realize that, that was the, the vast Rock majority? Rock. Yeah, you're right. Chris Rock. I, whatever. But think it's about hard it. To keep, it's hard to keep it straight. Think about it. There are so many in those rooms that absolutely hate you and everything you represent. They hate America. They want it destroyed. I mean, even the 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 Oscars was uh, touted as the uh, say say gay, we're gay, and everything is about being gay. The whole agenda of homosexuality. The I mean, they were bragging about you know in the this movie in Canto, and it's the 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 outing of certain you know gay people, and and you it's just like okay, guys, come on. Why are we running as Christians towards their philosophy? So what's going on? We have to think about a few things. Number one, we can't be neutral. Neutrality is a myth. Romans 1.18, man is by nature an enemy of God, and they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. We cannot claim neutrality in these issues. We can't just be silent. We can't just sit there and say, well, you know, it's, it's not that bad. And, and, and if we're going to be real Christians, we shouldn't say anything. No, that's actually a false. What about the way Christians think about the world will be categorically different than the way the world thinks? Sh shouldn't that be true? Should we expect a drastic difference in the world and how we evaluate and de de define things. I mean, I would think me. so. I would think so. I would think well, that as, got, as go, go ahead. We got two different starting points. We have uh, the Bible is the, our ultimate authority. It is our starting point is God created everything. Six little 24 hour days that, 
uh, that we were created in God's image and they got uh, a bunch of nothing. They got a nothing burger. Some of them believe that, uh, that some of them believe that we evolved from monkeys. Some of them are like, oh, we're, we just came into here. Some people talk about having aliens having come in the past. They just, they don't know what to stand on and they just keep coming up with all kinds of stuff to try to fight against God and make, make it make sense for them. If, if we believe that we've got a different starting point, the result would be that as Christians, we should expect that the world's going to hate us as they hated Christ. We should expect that there'll be those that are going to try to infiltrate and that we're going to expect that there's going to be those that are going to try to, to, to break us down and, and have us think like the world. We should expect that we're going to be deemed and called enemies of God or the enemies of the world. You know, Laura, you, you keep saying it, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm telling you, you're hitting it out of the park here. You know, we, we, they are haters of God. And in, in this world, they stand united against us. I want to I want to tell you some things. Is marriage and family is it secular or is it biblical? What do you think guys? Is marriage fam marriage and family is it secular or is it biblical? Where does it find its last starting I, point? Last I checked it started with God creating man and woman in this image and then he, you know, he he reiterates that in Genesis chapter 2 tells the Tells the whole story. He made man from the dust, mm -hmm. breathing him to the nostrils of life, presented before him every creature, saw that uh, he, he wouldn't be a good mate with those. And God created a wife for him to live with him forever and produce children so that they could have children. They could break off from them and start their own families. So what you're trying to say is that we believe in a creation model that we believe that gender is a construct of God's creation and not man's opinion, that we have a moral standard because we have a standard giver that we have ethics because God has given us an ethical truth that we have a work ethic because God has given us the command to work. Therefore we should have finances and a financial ethic and, uh, you know, built on that, we have a governmental and a legal ethic, right? Yep. Well, how did we get to where we're at today? I think there's there's a few places that we can see it. This, this may not define every bit of it, but we can see it here. Number one, Darwinism. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, but number one, Darwinism. And number two, Marxism and critical theory. And number three, postmodernism. Okay. Those are the three areas that are dominating the mindset. And those all come out of that middle point of Marxism. You know, Darwin came up with his theory. Let's talk about that for a minute. You know, Darwin, he came up with his, uh, uh, his discussion and his theory about it. Um, and if you think about it, I've got a video here that I'm not sure that we want to watch the whole thing. It's only like two and a half hours, but this is called the escarpment letters. Uh, Dr. Jerry Bergman, he, he, um, he gave us, he, he gave us a, a wealth of knowledge here. You can find it on YouTube, the escarpment letters, E S C A R P M E N T lectures, L E C T U R E S. Um, he, he talks about the fact that Hitler and the Germans, that they were so proud of their work uh, to, approve their, to prove their superiority as the Aryan, Aryan race. They believed that they could produce a racially pure empire by destroying all inferior races. Um, the scientific community was crucial in carrying out their goal, and what they would do is... is all their experiments were to prove 
that they were evolved from a different form of ape based on Darwin, based on Darwin. And you have to understand, uh, if you go, if you go and watch this, the escarpment letters, uh, lectures, that is, I'll just, I'll just give you a real quick, you know, real quick. View of it. Let's see if I can pull it up. Real PhD quick. in biology and a PhD in theology and a PhD in philosophy. All right. This is, uh, this is theology, Jerry the Bible with evolution and my response. And I get that a lot. People say, well, can't we just believe in both? Can't we believe that God used evolution as a means of creation? Well, we could, except the problem is that the evidence against evolution is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely overwhelming. There's simply, there's no evidence for it. And if you come up with evidence, you let me know and we'll do some papers and we'll both get the Nobel Prize and I'll share it with you. So it's I just the up. evidence is not there. And right. I'm working on a book now, which... I'm going to fast forward this real quick because I want to try chapter to get to it. why Darwin felt women were inferior. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, Darwin, Darwin thought okay, Nazism, women were inferior. The greater Likes. German Empire was to be a racially pure empire. Germany was the last best racial hope of mankind. And this was said by Thomas Chiders, who is a professor of history, who was primed to explain why they did what they did. What they did, they were not trying to do anything bad, as we see it today. They were trying to do something well, like when you need surgery to remove a tumor, it's difficult. The doctor has to open your body up, pull the tumor out, sew you up. But in the end, it's better, much better, because now you have the cancer, the tumor removed. So what they believed was when this is all said and done, when we have a superior race in the world and all you inferior races are destroyed, this will give us uh, greatness and, and, and accolades. And well, Germany was the last best racial hope of mankind. And they really believe this. Today we see this as ludicrous. But of course, as Christians, we believe what? All people are descendants of Adam and Eve. We're all brothers and sisters. Therefore, as the Bible says, one blood. There is no superior race. And Viktor Frankl, he summarized what I have researched and found, and he said, and he was a, a scientist, I taught at uh, university in Vienna, but he said, now listen to this carefully as I read it. This really summarizes my book. The gas chambers of Auschwitz were the ultimate consequence of the theory that man is nothing but the product of heredity and environment, or as the Nazis like to say, of blood and soil. This word means in the German, uh, heredity, basically. Blood, blood refers to your, your heredity. And soil, so is the environment. So the Nazis are a product of, and they wanted to utilize blood and soil to produce a superior race. He goes on and says, I'm absolutely convinced that the gas chambers of Auschwitz, Dublinka, and my Dunkirk were ultimately prepared, not in some ministry in Berlin, but rather at the desks and in lecture halls of the nihilistic scientists and philosophers. And I have a so if you you see what he's talking about here, um, Laura, um, I think that you need to look at this the escarpment lectures. The whole chapter in a book coming out. I think you need to. I, need, I think you need to look at this and send this to the people that were telling your daughter that none of this happened because he he has an, an entire lecture and discussion about the wickedness that went on here. And the reason for it, as we're trying to kind of talk about tonight, the reason for it, the goal was to expunge the Judeo-Christian Muslim doctrine of human divine origins uh, from the mainline theology of uh, Germany and its schools and to replace it with Darwinism, Darwinism. openly contributed to the acceptance of social Darwinism that culminated in the Holocaust. You need to check that out. You need to really look at this. The contributions of Darwinism and Charles Darwin is the road to atheism. Darwinism, it, it goes straight down to atheism. There is no God. You have to come up with another 
another viewpoint, another vantage point. Darwin, uh, Darwinism provides the key foundation for racism. I, I pulled this up here uh, last time that in Darwinism, the book itself talks about the struggle for the, the races, the struggle uh, you know against the, the lesser races and for the greater races. Um, let me see. Somebody has just asked me if I can pull that up. It's the escarpment lectures. I'll, I'll um, uh, Tom Boheem. Or, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, asked uh, where Anthony was, and he's at the uh, the women's conference with his his wife. And my wife is there uh, with my family, so they'll be. Uh, that's that's where they're that's where they're at. He'll be on next week, <clears throat> interviewing me about. Uh, my book, When My Ox Scores My Neighbor. What's that book called? When My Ox Scores My Neighbor. The uh, subtitle oh, is Using Hermeneutics to Travel from Mount Sinai to Mount Zion. It is such a hard read. It is this thick. It is only 118 pages, and it teaches you all the basics that you uh, need to know for how to interpret the Bible on, on your own. It, and unlike other hermeneutics books, it teaches through example, and it only uses one passage, Exodus 21, verses 28 through 32. It, uh, it, it's something I wrote thinking, you know, why, why do pastors and uh, people in seminary, why are they the only ones that get to learn how to interpret the Bible for themselves, and after being indoctrinated by their colleges already. Isn't it better to teach people how to interpret the Bible for themselves and come up with their own conclusions? So that's that's why I wrote this book, When My Ox Scores My Neighbor, so you can interpret the Bible for yourself. So. Uh, by the way, you, you're not allowed to uh, uh, take take time out of the, the show to, to do your own self-promotion there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, we're not going to let you do that for the past few minutes. <laughs> no, actually, I've read it. I got it. It's a great book, and it's, uh, you know, Josiah, I really appreciate you coming on and 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 doing this with me. You know, I'm going to tell you, it's it's so important that we that we think in the terms of what does the Bible say, what does it mean by what it says, and what did it mean to the people of the time, and how can we apply that to ourselves without defiling what it meant to the people of that time. You know, that, so that's what we need to, we, we need to really think about these things because the, the worldview of the worldview of this world wants us to, wants us to forget about the authority of God and his word. You know, that's what they want us to do. And they want us to rest on the, the, the authority of man. Um, and I think that's really what the, I think that's really what the history of the world is. And to, and in today's society, we have to go back, you know, some, some time. Uh, in today's society, we have uh, the result of it being the critical Marxist and the Marxist dialectic and things like that, that are going on in our schools. You know, that's what's going on in our schools. And we have to really recognize that. Um, have you ever heard of Daryl Harrison? No, not off the top of my head. All right. Well, some of you have. Well, um, they do this. It's not 2,000 uh, years old. I don't know much about it. <laughs> Daryl Harrison is a wonderful brother in Christ. And um, him and him and um, the name just went out of my head. Uh, he and another brother do, do the um, um, uh, Just Thinking podcast. And Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so they do the Just Thinking podcast, and Daryl Harrison, he, he writes um, a, a lot of material. He's, he's just really smart. And he, you know, I, I've studied their stuff, uh, the Dr. Peter Gaiman and, and Dr. Doug Bookman and, and all these guys. They have such great information. But um, Daryl Harrison talks about the Marxist eschatology of critical race theory. And in that book, he said that critical race theory leverages 
the Marxist dialectical language in order to advance the proposition. Listen to this proposition that racism. And remember, we're talking about critical race theory as a social construct construct is the fault of capitalism. Virgil Walker. Thank you very much. Virgil Walker. Um, Jason, I appreciate that. Uh, they said that it's a result of capitalism, which in critical race theory is also a social construct so that capital capitalism can be replaced by a more egalitarian system that is grounded in cultural Marxism so that, and this is all him saying this oppressed and the marginalized classes and those classes that are intersectional, not merely racial, they become the new oppressor class and white people become the new oppressed class. You see what I'm saying? The whole idea is to subjugate anybody that doesn't fit in their class that they call white. That's why the lady can tell, or the man, I, I don't know who he was talking to, but Andrew can, can say that, that this person said that he was uh, transphobic and he was an oppressor because he did he disagreed with the transgender movement and he was an oppressor as a white as a white man yeah that was a perfect response he gave too well you're at you're anti-semitic because i get to define the rules yeah. since she can define her own rules he, he can define his so here's the thing if darwin if darwinism naturally leads to atheism the twofold question of morality and authority become intensely important. If man is inherently good, or at least uh, neutral, then what about the problem of evil? Because evil does exist. And see, that is a contradiction in, in, in issues. If man is inherently good or neutral, then there can be no evil. Right. So even their arguments are contradictory. <clears throat> but if if evil does exist, the cause has to be viewed as the society. It has to be viewed as society being the problem. Uh, and, and that's that's where the problem shows up. There was um there was this this this, this discussion in the. Journal, journal of uh, Psychology, human, Humanistic Psychology, psychology it says, experience leads me to believe that it is a cultural influences, that it is cultural influences which are the major factor in our evil behaviors. So it's just cultural influence. So you can, you can sit there and you can say that sick people, uh, this other person said, that sick people are made by a sick culture and healthy people are made possible by a healthy culture. You know, the, and, and you think about it. What did we just listen into in the escarpment letters or lectures? What is it that, that Nazi Germany was saying? They were saying that they were trying to get rid of a cancer. Mm -hmm. They were trying to do a good thing by wiping out these wicked, evil uh cancerous malcontents, if you will. The, the ones that were a problem for society. And the, so that means that the society, the institutions of the society are problematic and they must be changed. Now here in a few minutes, we're going to talk about that, but they have to be changed. So we it, start out, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it, it's kind of amazing to me how people who think that they're inherently good can think that society is evil because all society is, is a group of people. If yeah. the group of people is inherently good, then the society is going to be good. It, it is a lot log logical contradict contradiction. Like you said, now I want you to think about this in this, in this setup. If you talk, talking about biblical view of authority, it starts with God as the ultimate source of authority. Okay, that's God. And he's given us his scripture, which is the ultimate 
uh, revelation of God's authority. And then the ultimate source of Scripture being God, and God revealed this truth, his divine truth to men. He codified it, 66 books. And through those men that he moved by the Spirit of God, he had them write down and scripturate his inspired word. And it tells every individual, every family, every church, and the state how they are to view their role and, and what it is they must do to please God. So that's what we believe as Christians. But when you take God out of the equation, in the Darwinian worldview, what is the ultimate authority? There is no God. So it starts with the individual. If it's the, if it's the, if it's the individual, then it's subjective and everything that you believe is true for you. What, what do I say? That, that, that whatever is true for you is true for you. So ultimately, truth is relative and relative subjectivism has, you know, it's brought in all kinds of problems. You know, you think about it. What are the, what are some of the things that come out? Dr. Dave Ber Burgraff, he actually um, uh, wrote this uh, in, a, in a lecture he did. It's, it's talks about, he talks about, with the concept of relativism, it has produced utilitarianism. Do the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. Guys, that's what the, the answer for atheist is. Every time you talk to a person that says they're an atheist, okay, why do you do good? What's, you know, what's the, the reason for you doing good? That's the answer. The greatest good for the greatest number of people. What they don't tell you is, is the reason that they can say abortion's okay, because it's not necessarily for all people. And so their utilitarianism is relativistic. Um, existentialism, man's highest duty to God, is sometimes transcends all ethical laws. Non-Christian existentialist, since Kierkegaard proclaimed that each man has the right to do his own thing. Then you have evolution. This, the central tenet of evolutionary ethics is that right is what aids the evolutionary development of mankind, and wrong is anything that hinders it. Now i got a question for you. Josiah, mm -hmm. in that mindset, forcing the entire, and I'm not saying we're doing that, but if it were to happen, that we force the entire globe to live out as homosexuals, what would happen to it in one generation? Well, it would completely die out. You'd be done. So it's self-destruction is inherent. The only way to assure that doesn't happen is to, you know, procreate outside of your own sexual you know, desires. Yeah. Well, I think the lab is what, where they're going to try to go to, to try to make children and they're going to try to, it's going to be, it's going to be similar to the, uh, the giver. I don't know if you ever read the giver where, uh, basically all the children are made in a lab given to, uh, birth, uh, uh to made from birth mothers given to given out to families and they, they raise them according to the standard of the state. Hmm. I think that's where they want to go is just to have the state control all the children. And so we'll have all, all the children loyal to the state. Well, but think about it. What we're talking about right now, you know, for those of you on podcast, the result of Darwinian evolutionary theory is state run control. It has to be because man is the ultimate authority. Men must be governed by a consensus of subjective opinions that coalesce into a governmental body. Now you think about this. It's the Hegelian process. It's even if you want to, if you dare, I say it's a democratic process. We come from consensus to, you know, we're continuously talking about thesis and antithesis to, to the middle point of consensus. Then you move it a little bit further. It never goes the, to the, you know, you have a pendulum swing. Well, you just move the pendulum over 
and then you let it swing again. It never goes back to a center point. What it says is there is no dogmatic truth. And since there's no dogmatic truth, we have to be governed and ruled by the consent of the governed uh, the, of the people. In other words, they say in mass, the will of the people in mass. And it sounds, you know, you're, you're saying, but that's like America and that's like what we're hearing in, in America. But the problem is it's not, it's not the state oversees the individual, the state oversees the family, the church and the moral identity of those who are being governed. So they tell you what's right. And they tell you, Oh, we're doing elections. We're free and fair elections. Well, no, we've seen that that's not true, you know, but the worldview is based upon the presupposition that Marxism is right. We, we, we will, we're going to see this foundation as we keep going through here and talking about it. Now, the question is, is do you see the problem that's being interwoven into our society and, and how it is uh, Marxist to the core? You know, the Bible, you know, the Bible is clear and Marxism is, it, Marxism is clear that they have an eternal struggle that says there is no God, that man is the is good, but that groups of men in power are evil and must be overthrown and replaced by groups of men who need to take the power. Do you catch what's going on? That's what's being said today. You know, this new power group. They become the, the oppressor and kind of like an Orwellian 1984 George Orwell moment. You say the ones that fought for our liberation have now become the oppressor. They now oppress, you know, like we read a few minutes ago, the white guys. And since they're the oppressors now, guess what? They have to be now seen as the enemy. It's a constant war of ideas. There is, there can never be peace. There's a constant war. And that's the reason for it is, is Marxism and socialism is, is predicated upon the back of hate, of evil, of oppression, of war, of violence and destruction. It, it, it cannot perpetuate itself any other way. It cannot uh, govern by peace it cannot govern by love. It cannot be governed by goodness. It it th There you go. Laura, she says it again. Laura, you, you just keep knocking it out of the park. She says it thrives on division. And it's, it, and it's absolutely true. You know, that it, it's what we're seeing in our society. And it's absolutely true. And the biggest reason is this guy right here. That's Karl Marx. Karl Marx was, um, he was a messed up man. Um, and so we want to talk about some of the histories of, of Karl Marx. Before we do that, however, uh, let me see if I can pull this forward just a little bit. Um, Josiah, do you got anything you want to, you want to put in there? Uh, I, I know a little bit about, uh, Karl Marx's teacher. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head, but he was in, he was in Britain and, uh, before that, he was he was in America, and he tried to start two socialist like uh, uh, city states, and they 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 fell. They completely collapsed. And one of the founders of the Restoration Movement, uh, his name was Barton Stone, debated this man and beat him in a in a debate on over atheism. After after that, he went to England and started teaching. In university and Karl Marx was his main was, was his best student, I guess. Well, yeah, pretty, and, pretty and, crazy and, stuff. Oh yeah, and, and I'm a, I just want to kind of give you a little bit of an idea here, because this is going to blow your mind. Karl Marx is born in 1818. Okay, he's a nominal. Uh, he was a, a, a nominal Jew and then became a nominal Christian. Uh, he was uh, in liberal Christianity. Um, he sympathized with Prometheus. He loved Prometheus because Prometheus hated all the gods and wanted to kill them all. And and his idea in 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 his philosophy, he wanted all of the gods dead. 
He wanted them all all gone. So so Karl Marx, and in, in, I mean, he was a genius, but he was also insane. Um, let me read something to you. Um, Sounds like a Christopher Hitchens or Richard yeah. Dawkins. Yeah. Um, let me read this to you real quick. Karl Marx in his in his afterward to the second German edition, he said this uh, in his um, um, his writings. He says, "My dialectic method is not is not only different from the Hegelian dialectic uh, method; it's the exact opposite. With me, the idea is nothing else than the material world reflected on the on on the human mind and translated in the forms of thought. With him, it uh, uh, with him it is standing on." its head, it must turn right side up again. And if you will discover the rational kernel kernel within the my- mystical shell. So, so he, he was extremely, um, he was extremely narcissistic. He, he thought of himself as, as the standard of standards for what it meant to understand and have knowledge. And, and he, he was a fundamental teacher of, of a of class struggle and oppression, he actually built his 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 teachings around the fundamental problem of humanity. It can't be God; it has to be uh, oppression. It has to be that that there's a class struggle that would take place between the bourgeoisie, is what he called it, and and, and that means those who have the means of production of private property, uh, anybody with capital. That's why we talk about capitalism. Uh, to buy and 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 to decide what they will do with their money under economic determinism. Um, you know, you hear if you hear these things in the in the news today uh, or in, in news media, it's always going to be seen as economic determinism is evil. You need to be able to to um, make sure we have a equality of outcome. We believe in equality at the beginning. But under the ideas of hard work, building up capital, growing your capital, and then working hard in this economy, it determines usually what's going to happen in this in, in your life and usually in the lives of others around you. You become what's called the what he called the bourgeoisie, because since you have the capital and nobody else does or the other people don't, they call it a zero sum game is what what they, they want to call it. And the idea that they have here is Marx thought there's only so much in this world of a pie. And if Josiah takes a little bit and I take a little bit, there's not enough for everybody else. And so we got to go kill Josiah and Justin and take their part of the pie. Because that sounds fair. (laughs) He actually taught that revolution would naturally come because of the working class, those oppressed working class, they would see that the elite class have, has everything and they would destroy that. And they would also in turn destroy the family at, because the family was uh, the, the dominant um, governing factor of the culture. That's why you see in our society today, the, the black family, the you know, African-American black family was targeted by the left to destroy that, that culture. You know, in the 60s and the 50s, you had you had more uh, husbands in in black families than you had in the white families. But not anymore, because they wanted to destroy that. They had to to create the the idea of oppression. Marxism, it's been implemented in you know Venezuela, Russia, the Congo. Uh, and, and when I'm saying t- talking about Marxism, I'm not just talking about socialism. The Marxism has its feet in, ca- uh, you know, in communism as well. And it's responsible for for more than a hundred million deaths, more than any other ide- ideology. It could be more than that, but I'm not exactly sure how many people you could you could count on the head of a pen before you ran out of room. You know, so, so you have to think about this. He's wanting to say that that we want to destroy the family, we want to destroy the idea of 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 capital government of 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 um, the culture and the, the society, society we have. And he had a economic philosophy, as I, as I told you, was viewed as this zero sum game. Somebody wins. And if they win, the other people are losing. 
Uh, as I said, he predicted that the, most of the capitalistic nations would be the first to uh, rise in rebellion and the, and the least developed would be, would implement his ideas. Do you know what happened that stopped his ideas from being fulfilled? Think about it. Bourgeoisie, proletariat, what's in the middle? The middle, middle class. class. Those people that were working and that they were building equity, they were building capital, they were saving money, they were building a future for themselves, they were trying their hardest, they were actually uh, purchasing and, and buying and investing. The middle class came out of it. And, and what you're seeing right now, brothers and sisters, listen to me, what you're seeing right now in this, in this country and or indeed around the world is the the heart and soul of critical theory of Marxism is to destroy the society by destroying the middle class. You want to know why uh, O'Biden was giving out all this free money? You want to know why he was giving out this free money to you and telling you how you, you were getting your stimulus check so that you would not go to work in that middle class job. He wanted you and he succeeded you go around and look how how many jobs everybody is sitting here online if you would type in think about it how many jobs do you know of in your community and your area where 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 businesses are are begging for people to come to work oh yeah i, I mean i can't tell you how many hundreds of people around here are begging please 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 the police department up here is, is, is posting, please come. We'll train you. We'll do everything we need. We're desperate for help hmm. because it's a destruction of the middle class. And that is what Marx didn't see. That's what the next generation of Marxists, the, the neo-Marxists, that's what they did see. And that's what they were doing. They were busy under Antonio Gramsci. They were busy wiping out the, the culture from the inside, you know, Antonio Gramsci, I'll just kind of give you a, a quick rundown on this evil man. He wrote the prison letters in 1948, translated them into, in the seventies. Um, uh, Joseph Stalin said, this is a mind that no one should ever, ever allow out of prison. Okay. He, he had him in, he had him in prison. Um, he was a Italian socialist. He worked closely with Benito Mussolini. Uh, he was sent to prison. And I said Stalin. I'm sorry. I meant Mussolini. Uh, Benito Mussolini said that he was the greatest threat to this world in his mind. He believed that the reason that there was no revolution was because of the middle class, because of the Western culture. For Gramsci, the culture was linked to Christianity and the cultural hegemony it had to be broken because if you didn't break it, there would be no liberation for, you know, you think about it. Marx thought that the economics led to the culture. Gramsci believed, and this is uh, from my professor. He believed that the culture led to the economics and for Marxism to be successful, there needed to be a de-Christianization of the uh, Western culture and a culture uh, change through infiltration now, I want to, I want to uh, quote for you one thing that he said. In the new order, socialism will triumph by capturing the culture via infiltration of schools, universities, churches, and the media by transforming the consciousness of society. What do you think about that? I think he succeeded. Yeah, he succeeded. You know, you think about it. Nazi Germany, <clears throat> excuse me, Adolf Hitler said, um, let me control the textbooks and I'm going to control the state. Guys, we got kids that are coming out. We've had kids since Obama and since Clinton, even since the, the Bushes that are that, that have indoctrinated our kids. Don't, don't get me wrong. The, the Clintons and the Bushes and these guys, they all work together. If you don't think that they do, you're blind as a bat. These guys have always worked together. They want, you know, they, they, they act like their goal is to 
is is to better improve blah 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 their goal is marxism adolf hitler was just saying hey let me do it better i can do it more his he, he indoctrinated kids you know he 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 actually used them to conquer cuz what parent is going to go attacking these beautiful little children no you're going to join in there when you've got all these millions of beautiful little children you know uh captain black eagle says it starts with fdr brother it started way before that you know this has been going on before that i'm gonna tell you I, and, and i no offense i'm not trying to be confrontational with you but, I, but think about it listen to what graham she said about christianity and socialism socialism is precisely the religion that must kill christianity it is a religion in the sense that it is to a faith and because it has substituted for the consciousness of the transcendental god of the catholics trust in man and his best strengths are the sole spiritual reality catch that did did you did you catch that i, I want to pull this up on screen so socialism is precisely the religion that must kill christianity guys they've been trying to do this for thousands of years and they're not going to stop they're not going to stop so I want to talk to you about the Frankfurt School, and this is the near where they make hot dogs, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where they they have hot dog parties. This is near and dear to my heart. I did a lot of study on this um, in in a paper that I wrote talking about the history of critical race theory, and Dr. Neil Shinvey and um, Dr. Uh, Pat Saywaller, they explained that critical race theory traces all the way back to the Frankfurt School. They explained that the conceptual, uh, the beginning of, of the Frankfurt School, um, so that you understand what I'm saying when I say Frankfurt School, it's uh, just a German name that they used because they originally were going to call it the School school of Marxism. They were going to call it the School of Social Theory. They were going to call it you know several other names, the Institute of Social Research. Um uh, actually, I put it right up here. <laughs> um, but they had to come up with a term that would not be uh, pejorative that people would would accept. And so they called it the Frankfurt School or the School of Social Research. What they mean by that, the Institute of Social Research, what they mean by that is socialism. How to advance socialism, Marxist socialism. It was overseen by uh, neo-Marxist philosophers, Max Horkheimer, Theodore Adorno, Herbert Marcuse. I'm going to talk about him in a minute. And the Oxford Dictionary of Critical Theory, they say that Horkheimer coined the term critical theory to describe the ideology of the Frankfurt School. Do you see the connection now? Everything we're talking about is born out of these guys that were teaching the second generation of Marxism. And this was back in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. I mean, it goes all the way up to today. This has been going on for a hundred years of indoctrination. I mean, it's 19, uh, 1923, it's 22, so 99 years. In 1939, Max Horm Horkheimer defined the Institute's approach to social and critical analysis as critical theory a label that has become uh, virtually synonymous with the Frankfurt School. Today, for many people, particularly the Anglo-American cultural studies, uh, in, in those studies, and that's in every college, by the way, some, for, some form of critical social study, uh, cultural study, some type of it, it links back to the uh, Frankfurt School as the, the means du jour of the elitist outlook and an, a hostile attitude to popular culture. Um, the Frankfurt School is regarded, uh, regarded the capitalistic society with suspicion, and it's, um, it wanted to destroy all of 
the uh, Christian Cultural Society. The Frankfurt School is uh, also known as critical theory, uh, Marxist School of Socialism, uh, the the Institute for Social Research, and it was founded upon uh, Marxism so that they could speed up Marxist, communist, and uh, socialist ideologies. Now, uh, Neil Shinby and uh, um, Shinby and Sawyer, they actually have a um, a very good discussion about it. They said that the the Sorry. origins of of uh, hang on a second. That's the one. <laughs> they said that the origins of critical theory are often traced back to the Frankfurt School, which was founded in Germany in the 20s by these Marxist philosophers. And their idea was that to, to progress socialism and communism, Marxism, into all of society, all the way down, all the institutions. They talk about the, the slow march through the institution. It's going to take years. Justin Peters actually was talking about this, and he said that socialism is uh, communism and diapers. And that's exactly what it is. It's just a way to get you to accept their, their uh, concepts and their, their ideologies. Under the leadership of, of Horkheimer, um, the Frankfurt School followed Gramsci and the neo-Marxist approach. They actually were, were out from Germany, and they moved to America where there still are found today. Uh, in 1933, following the rise of power, they were moved, uh, they fled from Geneva and, and eventually went to America. And they are most well known for popularizing critical theory, critical uh, legal theory, critical social theory. And all of this was an idea that as a Christian society, Remember what they said, they wanted to get rid of the Christian nation. As a Christian society, their idea is that all legal, all laws, we saw this the last time we were together, all laws, all ideas, all policies, all procedures, everything that was built upon the Christian idea, the Judeo-Christian values, is oppressive, is, is uh, racist, is elitist and is capitalistic and must be destroyed. And that's what they taught. That's That was their idea from the get-go. Um, we talked about Karl Marx. So I, I want to read something to you. He wrote this in his, in his understanding of uh, Christianity, and I did not post this up here, but I want to, I want to read this to you. There are besides eternal truths such as freedom and justice, etc., and he means that that come from God, that are common in all states of society, but communism abolishes eternal truths. It abolishes all religion and all morality, and instead of constituting them on a new basis, it therefore acts as a contradiction to all past historical experiences. He and his followers, followers they held to that mantra, and they still hold to it today. We need something besides God. We need something besides Christianity, and they will do anything they can under the mantra of critical social theory to destroy it because you're a racist. You know, we saw it last time with Ibram Kendi. You're a racist. You know what the most racist thing you can do today is? To question anybody's sexual identity. You know, think about it. This fellow right here, I want to introduce you to him. Most of you guys don't have a clue who this is. Okay? This is Hugh Hefner on steroids. This man makes Hugh Hefner look like a choir boy. His name is Herbert Marcuse, and he I just read to you that he was one of the founders of the School of Critical Theory. Okay? Of of the Frankfurt School. He was basically the model that Hugh Hefner used for his sexual freedom empire, and he's known as the father of Marxist socialism. He was the one, he was one of the sexual deviant founders of the Frankfurt School. 
He's called the father of the new left. And he is the, the intellectual teacher of the homosexual, the pedophile, the transgender, and all the sexual communities that are, um, that are out there today. Herbert Marcuse, he was a neo-Marxist. He wrote uh, a book called Your Eros, talking about erotic, uh, Eros and Civilization, a philosophical inquiry into Freud. You see, he wanted to understand why, you know, the, the ego and the id and the ideologies of Freud, who would say that um, little little boys, uh, little girls, they come up with their sexual identity from birth, and they they are so malleable that you can you can move them into um, into whatever sexual preference you want them to move them into. Now, what are we seeing today? You know, Josiah, 30 years ago, anybody, anybody out here, you want to come in and answer this question, please do. 30 years ago, what uh, was it seen as normative to be transgender or to be to be seen as as uh, sexual deviant in any way? It, it wasn't normative 25 years ago. No. It started to get normalized in 2000. But it, yeah, twenty five years ago, people were looked at as strange for cross dressing. No. And See, homosexual being called gay was a bad term back in the day. Yeah, yeah. But you think about it, Marcuse meant, and this is what he said: the only way for human beings to escape the one dimensionality, one dimensionality of advanced industrial society is to rebel against technological rationality. And what he means by that is the repressive value of capitalistic morality. He wants to liberate. He said this, I want to, to liberate our erotic side, our sensuous instincts. Um, Marcuse, he actually says this talking about the Greek idea of pedophilia he, Marcus, even speaks affirmingly of the Greek notion that the road to higher culture leads through the true love of boys. You think pedophilia is something new? You think that it's it's not been in our culture and running all over the place? Um, it's little wonder that Herbert Marcus is regarded with such high influence in the sexual revolution uh, agenda of the sixties, the gay liberation movement in particular used his ideas to push. He, he wrote a book called reason and revolution and uh, Daryl Harrison of the just thinking podcast. Um, he actually, they actually talk about that. Mark Hughes is the definer of, uh, of, of cultural Social, social and systemic racism and is considered the founder of the American Marxism. And he shares that Mark Hughes was uh, using fascist practices to fight what he called fascism and the patriarchal capitalistic system. Now, this is starting from Karl Marx and progressing within just a few years that quickly into a psychological system of destroying the family, the church, the community, morality, the home. And, and wicked people like this are lauded as, as somebody, as, as examples to look up to. Yep. I, it just makes you wonder how, you, you know, you, you watch old movies and it seems like seems like that they're pretty positive. They don't use curse words. But people like this were getting rich and wealthy off of their perverted and cruel ideas. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, think, but it's never enough for these guys. It's I mean, there there literally is never a point where they say, you know what, I, I, I've. I've I've had enough of of um, 
the the idea of oppression and destroying and the idea of, of harming our 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 nation and our people you know i i just enjoying making all the money i'm making that's not what it's about see it's not about making money for them it's about destroying christianity it's about destroying anything that is a vestige of christian culture and you don't get it twisted guys you have to understand that our entire culture including our government is founded upon jesus christ okay it's founded upon the truth that that we are to go work hard and to provide for our families and to have family structure and order and that there is a god that's given us truth and and that we are um we, we are to 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 care for and love one another and that we're you know that's why all the laws we have were started now did they get twisted are they perverted by wicked vile people yeah so it's fair to say that the system has got some problems but it's not fair to say that we are systemically racist you know and that crowd you know wade is right that crowd that says the only way to destroy it is with uh you know to to get rid of those discriminating groups to become an anti-racist they're they're all they're seeing is that there is one monolithic group of whiteness and you are guilty of either being white white or appropriating whiteness if you aren't anti-racist this all goes back to gramsci guys you know well it goes back to marx remember we talked about the bourgeoisie and whatnot antonio gramsci he had he had he advanced these ideas of the bourgeoisie and the proletariat he advanced the ideas by destroying, but wanting to destroy and de-Christianize the, the culture. And, and think about this. It was, it was his mindset. Gramsci wrote the prison letters. He blamed the failure of socialism on class struggle. He wanted the revolution. And he wanted to, to do that because the Western society that was raised, uh, had raised a wealthy middle class. Uh, and Christianity taught things like grace and the gospel and forgiveness, marital unity, you know, fidelity to one husband, one wife. Uh, Will Smith, if you're out there, you know, Jada Pinkett Smith, if you're out there and you're listening to this, it's it's deviant, it's wicked, it's vile to be in an open relationship where you can, you know, uh, do those do that wicked stuff. Get right with God, get saved, and and, and listen to what God says. Right? Think about this. Because of the society that was raised up through our Judeo-Christian values, that's why we had wars against slavery. That's why we had the Emancipation Proclamation. That's why we had laws that said uh, it's not right to oppress people based on their on their color or their um, their gender, being male and female, true biblical genders, and saying that they can't you know, work and vote and they can't have rights and things like that. The America is the only culture that ever went against itself like this and fought itself to become better. Yet Gramsci says, and, and by the way, we did it because of Christ, because of the cross. We did it because of the word of God. Gramsci and these others say, Gramsci's and these other guys, they're saying, no, that we need to destroy Christianity. He believed that the oppressors coerced the ideology of every area of society through intellectual, moral, and culture enticements or by sheer force of laws and policies designed to punish noncompliance. Now, I'm reading from um, this, this paper that I wrote. He said, this, this coercion is legally binding through social contracts such as the Constitution and by the de dominant, uh, dominant totalitarian hegemony. Now, Gramsci's term for social leadership is hegemony. Now, he's actually the one that, as, as far as I can tell, started that word. And so Gramsci's Marxism seeks to dismantle every existing point of hegemonic power. And, and we saw that with um, Ibram X. Kendi and uh, D'Angelo, Robin D'Angelo, saying you are racist in every way, every policy is racist, every idea is racist. 
So in the New World Order, uh, Gramsci said this, in the New Order, socialism will triumph by first capturing the culture via infiltration of schools, universities, churches, and the media, and by transforming the consciousness of society. Now, when he spoke about Christianity, he said that socialism is precisely the religion that must kill Christianity. I think I posted that. Yeah, I saw that earlier. Yeah, I think I posted that um, from... There it is. I found it. Socialism is precisely the religion that must kill Christianity. Now, I guess the question comes, how's this affected our society today? <laughs> it's it's not too hard to answer, is it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's affected it to the point where, again, I'm not sending my kids to public school because they're going to get shoved that scubulon down their throats. Yeah, I agree, brother. I, t I totally agree. You know, and, and you think about it. Th these are these are Walt Disney types. I'm not saying Disney was that. These are types that come in and infil infiltrate, and they're you know millionaires and billionaires, and they come in and they want to destroy you and me because they want their sexual freedom. They want their they're, they don't they don't want to have accountability they don't want to have that that weight on them I want to I want to read this to you um, and hmm. there's a the Stanford in uh, Stanford.edu has a um, the uh, the plato.stanford.edu uh, entries on critical theory has uh, says this. Um, it follows that Horkheimer's definition of critical theory is adequate only if it meets three criteria. I want I want you're going to just this is going to blow you away. OK. OK. It must be explanatory, practical, and normative. For Horkheimer's, uh, so Horkheimer is another another guy that came into the group. Uh, we talked about him a little bit just just a minute ago. He was another one of the group. He said he had the idea that critical theory must be explanatory, practical, and normal normative. And what that is, it means that it must explain what is wrong with the current social uh, realities, identify the actors to change them, to provide both clear norms of for criticism and an achievable practical goals to transform the social of uh, the society. How do they do that today? It's a social cr critique that attempts to undermine the status quo in the hope of changing it for the better, according to their definition. They want to be distinct from traditional theory and they don't want to attempt to explain society uh, based on what we see, but what they perceive. Mm -hmm. It's based on uh, perceived microaggressions, perceived in, uh, injustices. Pre you know, uh, BLM, you know, somebody had posted this a little bit ago. BLM says, says um, that we're oppressed, whether, whether it's real or perceived. If you just think you're oppressed, you're oppressed, right? If you think that you're oppressed, then you're oppressed. At the same time, it is and it must explain what's wrong with the society, and it must tell us who the who the enemy is, who the actors are, how we can force them to be changed, and how we can silence them and change the entire society. It is negative in its exercise, and it appeals to every activist that's out there today. You know, you think about it. You had, uh, uh, yeah, John says made-up oppressions. Uh, think about it this way. Um, Berkeley, how many times did we see uh, during the time of Donald Trump's presidency, the CNN and everybody else that are screaming and yelling at Berkeley 
that this person is oppressing us. And, you know, you had um, Ben Shapiro, he would go to do a talk and everybody had to, you know, riot and destroy stuff. And because he was the enemy, he was the oppressor. You see that they even changed terminology. I mean, think about this, Josiah. If, if I was to come to your house with a hammer and walk into your room and tell you to give me your money or else, am I oppressing I would you? Shoot you? Well, I know you would, but I'm just giving a, I'm giving an analogy. So please don't kill me before we get the analogy done. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but think about it. And, and I'm being serious now. Think about this. I walk into your room. I got a hammer. Give me your money. Am I oppressing you? Um, sure. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Not in today's society because it's only right because you owe me reparations because I'm got a perceived injustice. You say, Oh, but wait a minute. You're a white guy. No, I identify as a three-year-old baby transgender kitten from the planet Holiba blue. And, and, and I've been oppressed by, you know, your beard. Now, now so don't, wanna... don't make fun of that because there's actually people who identify as kittens. <laughs> they, they they really get the surgeries and they they do terrible things to themselves. But yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I'd, but then I could I could one up you. I could I could say I'm a I self identify as a gay black unicorn from the the fairy tale land of. Habba laba ding dong. Well, so so I want to I want to kind of work on wrapping things up here a little bit. Um, we haven't scratched the surface of this stuff. I'm just trying to give you a good feel for what's out there. Um, there's a um, Shinvi Apologetics. Let me let me try to see if I can pull up a banner for this. Um, because I think everybody needs to look at it. Um, uh, it's Shinvi Apologetics, and uh, they do a great job of trying to help teach college students and um, just parents and teachers, everybody, um, about this critical theory and critical race theory and things like that. So let me make sure I've got the right, uh, I got anything right down here, shinviapologetics.com. Okay. So I have that. Um, I'm not going to find it. <laughs> All right, there you go. It's shinviapologetics.com. And I want to recommend that to you because uh, Neil Shinvi, um, he's, he's got uh, tons of writing on how to discuss and work through and talk about critical race theory. You know, Laura Anderson, um, I really hope for you and your family that this has been such a blessing and, and, that that you, you tell everybody about it. Send this, share this with everybody. We had this is our second episode really on this. We've got you know four or five episodes on you know BLM and stuff. And so go back and find that you know apologetics apologetics live. Um, but Shinvi Apologetics they they do a great job of breaking down the errors and really talking to us about how to uh, to interact with the critical theorists, the critical race theory guys, you know, in, in our school systems, uh, both college, both uh, in, in college and preschools and, you know, middle schools and everything else, you know, think you've got uh, critical theory, critical social theory, feminism, uh, you know, gender theory, you know, and critical race theory, you got queer theory. Your little children are being taught that, you know, biological male, biological female is a construct that doesn't exist. Okay. That it's, it's can be redefined. Of course, now you have uh, a lady that's going to be a Supreme court justice that doesn't know what a man and a woman is. You know, you have, you have adults that are telling your children about masturbation, about sexual activity, about, you know, oral sex, about every other type of sexual activity that there is out there. They're teaching your children the things that only you should be teaching or not teaching and the biblical standards are out the window. Right. And you say, but wait a minute, I got my kids in, in private school. I got my kids at homeschool, Josiah. 
So we're safe. No, you're not. They go on YouTube. They go on any social media platform anywhere and see it all day long. It's their friends. It's their family members. It's their loved ones. It's everybody around us is being indoctrinated with this stuff. You know, the, 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 the warning from Scripture is that we do not allow ourselves to be given over to vain philosophy, that we must be on our guard. We, we need to look out and stand up against the secular worldviews. We have to be people that can identify where Gramsci and Marx and where, you know, Hegel, we got to be able to identify where uh, evolution and, and, and atheism, where it's leading our, our, our culture, our children, our churches. You know, we have to be those people that are willing to stand up. And even if our own family members say we hate you, we have to be able to stand up, even if we are killed for our beliefs and say, mm -hmm. look, there is biblical truth. So think about this. Karl Marx theorized that they, there would be a natural revolution, a natural destruction of society that would bring in his version of a utopia. But because of Marx's ideas were never su successful, Gramsci took it and shifted into what's called neo-socialism, neo-Marxism, and he emphasized the need to systematically dismantle the Western culture. So just kind of giving you a recap. The Marxist developed the Frankfurt School to advocate for the destruction of the Western culture. It is in America today. It's everywhere you can see it. And Rudy Deutsche, he's one of Gramsci's uh, acolytes. He called neo-Marxism new strategy, the long, long march through the institutions. And you know where we see it today? We're just going to try to close up things, but I just want to tie off a little bow on this. Postmodernism. If there is no truth, if there is no reality, if there is no honest uh, intellectualism, then everything is defined by a skeptical quote unquote, reasonable, subjective reality, right? You and I get to say what's truth. You and I get to say what's real. We get to define and redefine terminology. We get to redefine reality. And now we can say we get to redefine gender. And what, it, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean to be uh, a good person, uh, you know, what does it mean to be, to be right in our society? Christian is wrong. You know, Christian is wicked. We're allowed to have radical skeptical skepticalism about, you know, what should be objective truth, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, J Josiah, when you had the, that first kid, was there any was there, was there anything in you that said, hey, this this is probably uh, best if I wait to find out what this child wants to identify as? No, <laughs> nothing, nothing like that. So, uh, I mean, you, your doctor said, congratulations, you have a. It's a girl. Yeah. girl. In our society, I mean, even in, even in medical society the truth is being transformed for the sake of the the you know the skeptical intellect you know i mean we, we're being told that i mean literally in in hospitals you're being you're being treated based on how you identify there's all kinds of problems with that number one is i'm just gonna say one of the biggest problems is, is you're denying the fact that there are people that have serious psychological problems and they have mental conditions where they think they're, you know, the cat or they're, they think that they think they're a UFO or they're a, you know, whatever. I mean, what do you tell a person that says, I think I'm Superman and he goes to jump off the building? Well, you identify it.
That's what I what I put down here. Um, uh, Doctor Bookman, he uh, I'm sorry, Doctor Gaiman, he he posted that four themes of the postmodernism are the blurring of boundaries, the power of language, cultural relativism, and the loss of the individual and the universal. Think about it. Wicked and evil no longer mean wicked and evil. Truth is no longer truth. Reality is no longer reality. And I'm just going to go back and say, you know, one last time, what is it that, that we, we need to do in order to combat this? You know, how do, how do we combat this? We, we could talk about, you know, so many more subjects, transgenderism and everything else. But I want to I want to kind of maybe bring it to a close. And I want I want to I want to leave us with with the thought: What is it that we can do? What's one thing do you think that we should we should start at, Josiah? Definitely need to be sharing the gospel. We, I, our culture is so anti-Christian, anti-Bible. That that just means that the field is white for harvest. That means that. We, we have so much opportunity to go out to your, to your neighbor, to the person you see on the street, right, to your school board, right, to your congressman, your everybody that you can think of. Share the gospel to them. Tell them about your sin, that we are all lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterers at heart, that we deserve God's wrath, and we deserve to get, spit, go to hell for all eternity. But God in his love sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on a cross uh, so that he could pay the penalty for our sins so that you and I can have our cases dismissed, that God can say, you're righteous, you're justified, you are made right with me. And the only response is to repent, turn from your sin, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, crying out for salvation. That's 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 the number one response. Also, Cody, people said pray, pray like nobody's business. Pray for our pray for people's souls. Pray for our our nation. Pray for the truth to ring out. That is that's that's our number. T- uh, that's our two things. I guess I think a third thing is to teach your children his true history. Teach your children the Bible. That's that's another thing to to do that would that would really help with with this situation. Amen. Also, somebody you know, asked earlier if uh, my my book is is on is on Kindle, and yes, it's it yes it is on uh, an ebook on Kindle. Um, sorry for bringing that in real quick. Might want to talk about our sponsor, My Pillow. Yeah, we're going to in just a second. Before you do that, I knew I knew you were going to jump in there and do that, but. I want to I want to lay out just a couple of things for you. Uh, Colossians two eight says this. It says, "See to it that." I'm sorry. Pull this up. See to it that no one takes you captive through the philosophy and empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. Your first devotion needs to be to Christ, brothers and sisters. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our war is not against the world. The world has already lost, right? It is this this idea, uh, this world's ideology and worldview and framework is wickedness. And we need to understand that the wickedness of critical race theory, intersectionality, and and all of these things, uh, we need to understand that these worldviews are against Christ. You know, the homosexual agenda, the transgender agenda, the intersectional agenda, all of these things, those are against Christ. Those are vain philosophies. And we cannot get our hearts and our minds stuck on this. We need to understand, as, as Jason just said, that CRT that Marxism, socialism, that uh, all these vain philosophies, they are brainwashing. They are to get you to believe that there is a a Christian idea in them. 
and that you can you can hold to them. Regardless of your ethnicity or your color, no person should ever be oppressed or mistreated or deprived of life or liberty, including babies, by the way. Including babies. They shouldn't be oppressed and they shouldn't be the ones being killed because their lives don't matter. Okay? That truth comes from the Bible, not from critical race theory or intersectionality or anything else. These false, these false ideologies, they have no sway or and should have no weight within Christianity. You know, the truth is that the Bible, it promises in God's word that Jesus Christ has come into this world to die for sinners. And he died for those who were liars and thieves and blasphemers, adulterers and coveters and haters, haters of God, haters of man. He died for them. And the, as you said, Josiah, the gospel is that we are to, we should by all means be those that tell people that they are created in the image of God, that they have been born in sin, that this world is corrupted under Adam, that we need Christ to redeem us from our own wicked nature. We can't just sit there and say, oh, it's good enough that, that you know, Adam, he sinned, but I'm not that bad. No, we have to realize that we are evil, depraved, we are wicked and vile, and that we all, each individual, needs to repent of our sin. We all need to repent of our sin and trust Christ. We, you know, if there is anything in you that that uh, is is racist or hate filled, then repent. The Bible tells us that that God is the one that has has joined us together. That He has broken down the separation that was against us. He is He is the one that that has destroyed the the opposition that we should have against one another. I mean, you see how, the, how Paul treated Peter when Peter started uh, doing the preferential treatment based on race. What did Paul do? He said, no, 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 no. I thought you was a Christian. You're in sin. And he told them to stop. Now, brothers and sisters, if that doesn't do it for you, and if that doesn't make you feel like, you know, that you are, that you are at peace, then I don't know what will. But I do know this. I do know that you can get yourself on my pillow and take you a good break and, and lay down on your pillow tonight. Uh, maybe you should call up my pillow at 1-800-873-0176 and tell them about the promo code for striving for attorney. It's SFE. You can go to my pillow and you can uh, get yourself a fluffy little pillow. And they're very comfortable. You know, they're, they're very comfortable. If you like the pillow, I mean, you'll love it. So, um, <laughs> oh, I couldn't get that out. But you, you have to think. You can lay down there on that pillow tonight and listen to all this again. And I hope that you come out with a solid worldview and an understanding of an unbiblical worldview that you won't say things like, you know, uh, Crenshaw and, and, and all these people, that they were, they're Christians, that you won't try to Try, try to say that intersectionality comes from a Christian mindset, that you won't say that, that uh, you know, critical race theory and critical theory, that those are Christian ideas. You know, you have to think. We cannot be held into vain philosophy. Won't you find your peace and rest with God? And for tonight, he'll get you my pillow and, and take you a good peaceful rest. But find the Prince of Peace and the God of all understanding uh, tonight if you don't know him. Well, it's uh, two hours and three minutes in, not counting the other show that got shut off. I what was that probably about ten minutes in? So seven, I think. Okay, well we're close. So we're we're, we're about you know, ten hours, uh, ten hours. <laughs> we're about a uh, little over little over two hours. So anyway, guys, I don't know what's on the agenda for next week. Um, Josiah, do you have any, you know of anything? Yeah, they're supposed to interview this crackpot who thinks he knows about, about hermeneutics. Oh, that lunatic. Oh, wait, that's oh. me. Yeah. Guys, I can't tell you anything. I mean, but if you look at him, he looks very shifty. Okay. So you might want to be real careful to, you know, but he looks a little shifty to me. So no, actually we're done guys. Um, 
we've had a wonderful time. I, ho I hope all of you have had a good time. I, we've been so busy. I haven't even had time to look at the comments. Is there anything in here that anybody wants to, to remember for, you know, comments, you know, for posterity's sake? Uh, J Cody said uh, 1 John 3.18. Uh, he said hermeneutics is his favorite topic. Um, let's see. Oh, and Laura said God bless. So uh, if this was edifying, I'm going to close out with this. If this was edifying and you got value out of this, I'm going to ask you to to follow us at Apologetics Live, uh, follow our, our podcast, to go on to the Christian podcast community, to look at their stuff and look at the stuff that we're, we're putting on there, uh, to support us at strivingforeternity.org backslash support. If you want to um, uh, get in contact with us, info at strivingforeternity.org is a great place to go. Uh, just flowing right through these. Um, if you want to give us a re review, you could go to lovethepodcast.com backsplash, backsplash, apologetics live, and uh, give us a good review. Um, it gives a terrible review, but just give us a review. <laughs> Don't, no, seriously. Um, we would, we would like to, uh, to ask for your prayers, your support, uh, and, uh, just, just ask that if, if we've been a blessing to you, please tell other people, share, share this with other people. We don't know how long we're going to be even able to be on Facebook anymore. That it's just, it's from one moment to the next, uh, we're not sure. And so we may have to go to a different, uh, different setup. But uh, please, please um, uh, share this with as many people as you can. Okay. Thank you, guys. God bless and uh, good night. Lord bless you. Try to make today a eternal day striving for Christ. Is that what Andrew says? Eternal day for the glory of God. Yeah, there you go. So like that. There you go. That's right. All right. Well, well I'll, I'll put that in the end part of it. Okay. <laughs> All right. God bless. See you, bye.